Hello students. Today I'll be discussing one more very important chapter in physical chemistry. That's about solutions. Okay. Two or more homogeneous mixture of substance. That's called as solution. And there are two components in solution. Solute and the solvent. Solute and solvent. This gives solution. The component which is present in less proportion, that's called as solute. The component which is present in more proportion, that's called as solvent. Okay. This is about the term solution. And there are different types of solution, homogeneous solution, heterogeneous solution. Now, about the saturated solution. Saturated solution is one where the added solute initially consumed by the solvent. At one point, the added solute, it remains as such. That solution is called as saturated solution. Now, so based on the, the phase of solvent, there are different types of solution. Now, first about the gaseous solution. Gaseous solution. In gaseous solution, solvent is gas. And it is further divided into three types based on the solute. Now, if solute is solid and solvent is gas, solvent is gas. Is an example for a gaseous solution. Now, example for this is iodine vapor. Okay. So iodine vapor in air, iodine vapor in air. in air. Second one, the solute is liquid. Solvent is a gas. Solvent is a gas. So example for this type of solution, example for this type of solution. So liquid in gas, liquid solute present in gaseous solvent, gaseous solvent. Water vapor in air. Water vapor in air. No. Similarly, one more, one more. Gas solute present in gas solvent. Both solute and solvent, both are gaseous form. No. So example for this, example, example for this, air. Air containing oxygen, nitrogen, etc. So these are the three types of gaseous solution. Gaseous solution. So next one about the solid solution. In solid solution, in solid solution, the solvent is solid. And again, there are three types of solid solution. Solid solutions. Solid solutions. No. First one, solid solute present in solid solvent. Example is alloys. Alloys are example for solid solute and solid solvent like brass, bronze, etc. Next one is liquid. Liquid solute present in solid solvent, solid solvent. So example for liquid solute present in solid solvent, hydrated salt. Hydrated salts. Last one is gas present in solid, gas present in solid. Gas is a solute. It's present in solid solvent, solid solvent. Now, so example for gas in solid, dissolved gases in minerals. 
dissolved gases in minerals in minerals now so one more classification of solution liquid solution liquid solution in liquid solution the solvent is liquid solvent is liquid liquid solution solid solute present in liquid solvent liquid solvent example is salt in water or sugar solution salt in water or salt solution Next one is liquid solute present in liquid solvent liquid solvent alcohol in water alcohol in water okay one more gas solute present in liquid solvent aerated drinks carbonated drinks carbonated drinks okay an example for gas solid present in liquid solvent so these are the different types of solution based on the types of solvent okay now next moving on to expression of concentration the amount of solute or amount of substance dissolved in a known volume of solvent that's called as concentration known amount of the solute present in known volume of the solvent and concentration can be expressed in different ways here we'll focus only on mass percent and volume percent molarity molality and mole fraction the other things already we discussed under some basic concepts of chemistry first one is mass percent mass percent okay is the ratio of mass of the solute present in mass of the solution into 100 mass of the solute divided by mass of the solution weight of the solution in 200 this gives mass percent similarly second one volume percent volume percent okay volume of the solute volume of the solute divided by volume of the solution into 100 is called as volume percent so next about molality molality small m so molality is defined as the number of moles of the solute present in 1 kg of the solvent so molality we can express like this molality molality so molality is equals to number of moles number of moles of the solute okay divided by divided by weight of solvent weight of solvent in kg weight of solvent in kg that gives molality now next one is about molarity 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 capital m molarity so molarity is nothing but 
नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ द सोल्यूट नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ सोल्यूट प्रेजेंट इन वन लीटर ऑफ द सॉल्वेंट सो इट इज गिवन एज वेट ऑफ सॉल वेट ऑफ सोल्यूशन इन लीटर weight of solution in terms of liter in terms of liter that gives molarity now the last one about the mole fraction mole fraction mole fraction x so mole fraction is nothing but number of moles of the solute divided by total number of moles of the different component present in the mixture if there are two components n2 that represent number of moles of the solute n1 represent number of moles of the solvent so you have n2 divided by n1 plus n2 this gives mole fraction and if there are two components two components a and b a and b x a is equals to x a is equals to n a divided by n a plus n b mole fraction of b that is equals to n b divided by n a plus n b sum of the mole fraction it is always equal to 1 sum of the mole fraction is always equals to 1 now so this is about expression of concentration strength of the solution So next we'll move on to some of the relationship between molarity molality and density of the solution so relationship between molality small m molarity and density so when you relate molality with molarity and density of the solution say molality m small m it is equals to capital m divided by 1000 into d here d is density of the solution d is density of the solution minus m into m1 into 1000 into 1000 d is density small m that refers to molality 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 of the solution capital m that refers to molarity capital m that refers to molarity d refers to density density now m1 m1 of oh. here m2 m1 that refers to molecular mass of the solvent m2 that refers to molecular mass of the solute so this is the m2 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 that refers molecular mass of solute molecular mass of solute see so this is the relation between molality molarity and density now same way the next one about the relationship between mole fraction and molarity mole fraction and molarity and molality so relations between molality molarity of the solution and mole fraction mole fraction So when you compare molality, molarity with mole fraction, with mole fraction, mole fraction of the solute X two, mole fraction of solute X two, it is equals to m into m one divided by m into m one minus m two, m one minus m two plus d plus d. Here x two represent mole fraction of the solute. M that refers to molarity. Molarity. 
M1, M1 that refers to molecular mass of solvent, molecular mass of solvent. M2 that represent molecular mass of solute, molecular mass of solute. And D that represent density. This is the relation between mole fraction, molarity and about the molality. There is one more relationship. So relationship between mole fraction and molality, mole fraction and molality. Mole fraction and molality. <coughs> mole fraction and molality. Now, look here. Now, how mole fraction is related to only molality? Mole fraction of the solute and the solvent. A refers to solvent, B refers to solute. Now, the ratio of, ratio of mole fraction of the solute divided by mole fraction of the solvent, it is equals to Molality m small m divided by thousand into into okay. molecular mass of the solvent molecular mass of the solvent. Therefore, here the molality m molality m that is equals to now we'll write like this x b. So mole fraction of a is nothing but one minus mole fraction of B, sum of the mole fraction XA plus XB is equals to 1. Therefore, XA is equals to 1 minus mole fraction of B. Okay. Into, into 1000, 1000 divided by M into A. Okay. So, this MA that refers to molecular mass of the, molecular mass of the Solvent, molecular mass of the solvent. So, this is a relation between mole fraction and molality. Now, next, moving on to solubility. Solubility. Solubility of solid and solubility of a gas. The first term is about solubility of solid in liquid. Solubility of solid in liquid. So, this refers to maximum amount of solid solute dissolved in 100 gram of solvent at a given temperature at a given temperature this is called as solubility of a solid solubility of a solid now and solubility of solid it depends on the two factors like hydration energy and lattice energy if hydration energy is greater than the lattice energy that compound is soluble so, solubility of solid takes place when hydration energy, hydration energy is greater than the, greater than the lattice energy. Hydration energy is greater than the lattice energy. So, this is about solubility of solid in liquid. Now, now about the effect of Temperature on solubility of a solid. What about the effect of temperature? So, this depends on the nature of the solid. When solid is dissolved in the solvent, heat may be absorbed or liberated. So, effect of temperature is explained by taking Lee Chatelier's principle and also. It's based on the nature of the solute, nature of the solute, now, effect of temperature. Now, in this case, when you consider okay, solids like, solids like NaNO2, NaNO3, sodium nitrate, potassium nitrate, potassium chloride, sodium chloride etc sodium chloride etc when these solids or solute dissolve in the water they dissociate so in order to undergo dissociation it absorbs heat absorbs heat so 
absorption of heat that reaction is endothermic reaction endothermic reaction since this is endothermic when it dissolved in water heat is absorbed this is endothermic reaction hence solubility increases solubility increases with increase in temperature endothermic reaction that favors according to chatelain's principle when heat is absorbed temperature decreases in that case to nullify the effect of temperature there should be liberation of heat to increase the temperature therefore here increase in temperature increase in temperature that increases increase in temperature that increases the increases the solubility okay similarly one more example we can take one more example in this case salts like salts like lithium carbonate sodium carbonate Li two CO three Na two CO three etc. Lithium carbonate or sodium carbonate. Okay. When dissolved in a solvent, when dissolved in a solvent, heat is liberated. That means the reaction is exothermic. Reaction is exothermic. When lithium carbonate, sodium carbon dissolved in water, heat is liberated. That reaction is exothermic. now say solubility decreases in this case solubility decreases with increase in temperature in the first case solubility increases with increase in temperature solubility increases with increase in temperature temperature because here when these salts are dissolved in water heat is absorbed in the second case when dissolved in water heat is liberated therefore solubility decreases with increase in temperature so this is about the solubility of solid in liquid next about solubility of gas in liquid solubility of gas in liquid no. so this is explained on the basis of on the basis of henry's law on the basis of henry's law okay so according to henry's law the amount of gas dissolved is directly proportional to directly proportional to directly proportional to its partial pressure or the partial pressure is equal to or mole fraction of the solute that is gas that directly proportional to partial pressure partial pressure so based on henry's law based on henry's law based on henry's law mass of the gas dissolved the directly proportional to its partial pressure partial pressure or mole fraction is equal to kh is henry's constant into partial pressure into partial pressure and here also solubility of gas that depends on the nature of the gas some of the gases like hydrogen oxygen they are less soluble when compared to carbon dioxide hcl etc the gases which exhibit similar properties with the solvent they are readily soluble in water they are readily soluble in water when you consider gases as the temperature increases temperature increases solubility of a gas decreases okay this is about 
solubility of gas in liquid. Now, so effect of temperature, effect of temperature, effect of temperature can be explained on the basis of Wandt-Hoff's equation with respect to two different concentrations, effect of temperature and also with respect to different temperature, different temperature. Effect of temperature on solubility. <coughs> Effect of temperature. So log C2 by C1 to different concentration. This is equals to delta H divided by 2.303 into R into T2 minus T1 divided by T1 into T2. The T2 is greater than T1. So this explains the solubility with respect to temperature. Solubility with respect to temperature. Okay. So the effect of temperature on solubility. Now, so solubility of a gas always decreases with increase in temperature. Now, so about the application of Henry's law. It is used in the production of carbonated drinks. In order to dissolve carbon dioxide in a given solution, Henry's law is applicable. Or in high altitude, the amount of oxygen is less. So mountaineers, they carry artificial gas cylinders. Similarly, deep sea divers, scuba drivers, for artificial respiration, they'll take gas cylinders. And all these works on the Henry's law. So these are the applications of Henry's law. So, next, moving on to Rolle's law of binary solution. So mixture of two solution is called as binary solution. So what about Rolle's law of binary solution? Okay. So vapor pressure of any compound in a solution is equal to product of mole fraction of that component and vapor pressure of pure component. Vapor pressure of pure component. It is called as Rolle's law of binary solution. Now, we'll consider the two components, binary, two different solution, A and B. Now, so partial vapor pressure of A, Rolle's law of binary solution. Binary solution. So A and B are the different solutions. So partial vapor pressure of A that is equals to product of mole fraction of A into vapor pressure of pure component. Okay. Another component B, vapor pressure of B that is equals to product of mole fraction of that component and vapor pressure of pure component. So here total pressure, total pressure, total pressure. It is sum of vapor pressure of two components, vapor pressure of two components. Now, now based on Rolle's law, based on Rolle's law, there are different types of solution, different types of solutions like ideal solution, non-ideal solution. Now, first we'll move on to ideal solution, ideal solution. Ideal solution. Solution which obeys Rolle's law at all concentration. Such solution is called as ideal solution. So example for ideal solution. Example for ideal solution. Okay. Benzene and toluene. Benzene C6H6. And toluene C6H5CH3. Second one, hexane, hexane, and heptane, normal hexane. 
hexane and heptane CH3, CH2, 5 times CH3. Now, third one, bromobenzene and iodobenzene, bromobenzene and iodobenzene, C6, H5, Br, C6, H5, I. Next example, carbon tetrachloride, CCl4 and silicon tetrachloride, SiCl4. Next one, ethyl iodide, C2H5, I and ethyl bromide, C2H5, Br. See, this is an example for ideal solution. Here, the structure is almost similar. Now, other properties of ideal solution. The solution which obeys Rolle's law at all concentration, that's called as ideal solution. Therefore, about the different properties of ideal solution, properties of ideal solution, characteristic properties. Properties ideal solution. So, first one, partial vapor pressure is equal to mole fraction of that component and vapor pressure of pure component. Second one, delta H mixing is equal to zero. Delta H mixing is equal to zero. Why delta H mixing is equal to zero? The interaction between two different components is same as the interaction between the two individual components. Your interaction between A and B is same as force of interaction between A and A and B and B. Therefore, when they dissolve, A and B is dissolved, they can easily overcome the force of attraction and it will mix. There is no chance of absorption of heat or liberation of heat. Absorption of heat or liberation of heat. Now, third one, delta H mixing is zero. Okay. Delta V mixing, next one, delta V mixing is zero. Here if you mix 100, 100, it will become 200. Total volume, no change. Means it will not cross more than 200 or it will not be less than 200. So delta V mixing is zero. And why delta V mixing is zero? Since the interaction between A and B is same as A and A or B and B, Distance of separation between A and B is same as distance of separation between A and A and B and B. A and A and B and B. Therefore, delta V mixing is zero. Such kind of solution is called as ideal solution. Now, next about non-ideal solution. Solution which fails to obey Rolle's law. Such solution is called as non-ideal solution, non-ideal solution, okay. non-ideal. So characteristic properties of non-ideal solution, partial vapor pressure of each component is not equal to product of mole fraction of that component and vapor pressure of pure component. When you consider other component, see, not equal to mole fraction of B and vapor pressure of pure component. Second one, delta H mixing is not equal to zero. Third one, delta V mixing is not equal to zero. So these are the characteristic properties of non-ideal solution. And these non-ideal solution further classified into two types. Non-ideal solution with positive deviation and non-ideal solution with negative deviation. Non-ideal solution with positive deviation from Rolle's law. Positive deviation from Rolle's law. 
First, we'll take the example for non-idle solution with positive deviation. Non-idle solution with positive deviation. Now, so example for non-idle solution with positive deviation. Ethanol and water, C2H5OH and H2O. Second example is methanol and water, CH3OH and water. Third one is a combination of ethanol and acetone, C2H5OH and acetone, CH3, CO, CH3. The fourth example, benzene and acetone, C6H6 and acetone, CH3, CO, CH3. These are examples for non ideal solution with positive deviation. About characteristic properties of non ideal solution with positive deviation. First one, partial vapor pressure of each component is greater than mole fraction of that component and vapor pressure of pure component. Second one, delta H mixing is positive, means heat is absorbed. Why heat is absorbed? The force of interaction between A and B is less than the force of interaction between individual component. Therefore, when these individual components are mixed, in order to overcome the force of attraction, it absorbs energy. Then they will mix with each other. That forms a binary solution. So when it absorbs heat, delta H is positive. Similarly, similarly, delta V mixing is positive. Delta V mixing is positive. The force of attraction between two different components is less than the individual component. That means distance of separation between two different components is more than the individual component. When distance of separation is more after mixing, the volume increases. That means if you mix 100, 100, it becomes more than 200. Delta V mixing is positive. It is about non ideal solution with positive deviation. Next one, non ideal solution with negative deviation. Non ideal solution with negative deviation from Rolle's law. Negative deviation from the Rolle's law. Yeah. About the example for non ideal solution with negative deviation HCl and water. HNO3 and water, HNO3 and water, or benzene C6H6 and chloroform CHCl3, chloroform CHCl3, and fourth one acetone CH3, CO CH3, acetone, and aniline C6H5, NH2, aniline. One more. Ethanoic acid, acetic acid, CH3COOH and C5H5N, C5H5N. These are examples for non ideal solution with negative deviation. So, about the properties of non ideal solution with negative deviation, negative deviation. First one, partial vapor pressure of each component is less than the mole fraction of that component and partial vapor pressure of pure component. Delta H mixing is negative. Delta H mixing is negative. Heat is liberated. Why delta H mixing is negative? The interaction between A and B, A and B is more than the individual component. Therefore, when individual component mix together, energy is liberated. The excess energy released, so delta H is negative. Next one, delta V mixing is negative. Delta V mixing is negative. The interaction between A and B is more. That means 
distance of separation is less when it is compared with individual component. Therefore, when you mix two different solution, the volume decreases. So here, when you mix 100 and 100, 100 volume of A and 100 volume B, the total volume is less than 200. So this is about non-ideal solution with negative deviation. Now, next we will move on to the colligative properties. So what are colligative properties? Colligative property is a property of dilute solution which purely depends on number of solute particle. Such properties are called as colligative properties. So example for colligative properties, example for colligative properties. Osmotic pressure, relative lowering of vapor pressure, elevation in boiling point, depression in freezing point. So these are example for colligative properties. First about osmotic pressure. To know the osmotic pressure, we should know the term osmosis. So osmosis is defined as the the flow of solvent from dilute solution to concentrated solution through a semi-permeable membrane. That's called as osmosis. When external pressure is applied on the solution just to prevent the osmosis, that external pressure is called as osmotic pressure. So osmotic pressure is the external pressure applied on the solution just to prevent the osmosis. Now, it's about the different laws in osmotic pressure, osmotic pressure, laws of osmotic pressure. Just like gas laws. First one, Van Tops Boyle's law. Van Tops Boyle's law. No. So at constant temperature, at constant temperature, temperature. Osmotic pressure of the solution is directly proportional to concentration or when one mole of the solute dissolved in V volume of the solvent, it forms a solution. So, you can write pi is proportional to 1 by V or inversely proportional to volume. This is about Boyle's law. Okay. Next about one of Charles law, one of Charles law, Charles law. So what about one of Charles law? Okay. So according to one of Charles law, at constant concentration, osmotic pressure of the solution is directly proportional to absolute temperature. At constant concentration. Osmotic pressure of the solution is directly proportional to absolute temperature. Similarly, next one, Van Tops, Avogadro's law. Van Tops, Avogadro's law. Secondly, under Avogadro's law. Osmotic pressure of the solution is directly proportional to number of moles. No. By using these three law, okay. by combining these three, one of Boyle's law, one of Charles' law, and one of Avogadro's law, one of Avogadro's law. So this is under condition equal volume. So, equal volume of the solution existing same osmotic pressure where osmotic pressure of solution is directly proportional to number of moles. That's called as Van Tops Avogadro's law. Now, from 1, 2 and 3 by combining these three laws we get pi is proportional to n 
सी टी ओके और वी कैन राइट लाइक दिस पाई इज प्रपोर्शनल टू एन इन टू वन बाई वी टी और पाई वी पाई वी इज प्रपोर्शनल टू एन टी और पाई वी पाई वी पाई वी इक्वल्स टू एन आर टी पाई वी इक्वल्स टू एन आर टी अगेन वी कैन मॉडिफाई दिस इक्वेशन पाई इज इक्वल्स टू एन बाई वी आर टी और पाई इज इक्वल्स टू सी आर टी दिस इक्वेशन इज कॉल्ड वन टॉप इक्वेशन फॉर डाइल्यूट सोल्यूशन वन टॉप इक्वेशन फॉर डाइल्यूट सोल्यूशन now from this we can relate with osmotic pressure with molecular mass see pi is equals to w by m rt by v or m is molecular mass of the solute molecular mass of solute wrt divided by pi into v pi into v so this is about osmotic pressure and molecular mass some of the terms related to osmotic pressure about isotonic solution very important term isotonic solution solution having same osmotic pressure such solution is called as isotonic solution pi 1 is equals to pi 2 when osmotic pressure is same concentration of the solution it remains same c1 is equal to c2 or we can write like this w1 by m1 is equals to w2 by m2 from this relationship you can calculate molecular mass of the unknown compound if molecular mass of other compound is given this is applicable only for isotonic solution it is only for isotonic solution now and for isotonic solution total osmotic pressure total osmotic pressure it is sum of osmotic pressure of two different solution two different solution okay or we can write like this total osmotic pressure pi 1 is nothing but c1 into rt pi 2 is nothing but c2 into rt so this is c1 plus c2 c1 plus c2 rt so this is applicable only for isotonic solution isotonic solution okay now next moving on to relative lowering of vapor pressure relative lowering of vapor pressure now this concept is very very important relative lowering of vapor pressure okay it is also given as rl vp relative lowering of vapor pressure r l v p relative lowering of vapor pressure So according to Rolle's law of relative lowering of vapor pressure, relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to mole fraction of the solute. Is equals to mole fraction of the solute. So P naught minus P divided by P naught. This indicates relative lowering of vapor pressure. It is equals to mole fraction of the solute. Mole fraction solute. Or we can write like this. relative lowering of vapor pressure is equals to n2 divided by n1 plus n2 n1 plus n2 for dilute solution for dilute solution for dilute solution n1 plus n2 approximated as n1 therefore relative lowering of vapor pressure relative lowering of vapor pressure okay all right here p not minus p by p not it is equals to n2 by n1 n2 by n1 now we can relate with molecular mass of the solute 
P naught minus P by P naught, it is equals to W2 by M2, W1, so M1 divided by W1. So M2 is molecular mass of solute, M2 is equal to W2 into M1 divided by relative lowering of vapor pressure into W1. This gives the molecular mass of the solute. It gives the molecular mass of solute. There is one experiment to determine relative lowering of vapor pressure. That's called as Oswald's Walker's dynamic method. Determination of determination of relative lowering of vapor pressure by Oswald's Walker's dynamic method. Oswald's Walker's dynamic method. So in this method, there are series of solution bulb, solvent bulb connected to absorption unit, connected to absorption unit. Absorption unit contains anhydrous calcium chloride. The pure and dry air is continuously supplied through the solution bulb as well as the solvent bulb. There will be decrease in weight of solution bulb, solvent bulb, but there will be increase in weight of U-tube containing anhydrous calcium chloride. By knowing this change in the mass, we can calculate relative lowering of vapor pressure. So according to Oswald's Walker's dynamic method, P naught minus P divided by P naught, it is equals to, it is equals to loss in weight of solvent bulb. Loss in weight of solvent bulbs divided by Gain in weight, gain in weight of calcium chloride tube, calcium chloride tube, YouTube contains calcium chloride. This ratio gives the relative lowering of vapor pressure. Okay, okay. The next term is about the elevation in boiling point, delta Tb. So what is called boiling point? The temperature at which vapor pressure becomes equal to atmospheric pressure, atmospheric pressure, that's called as boiling point. It's about elevation in boiling point, elevation in boiling point. Elevation in boiling point. Okay. Delta Tb, delta Tb. So delta Tb is equals to T minus T naught, where T is the boiling point of the solution. T naught is the boiling point of pure solvent. So here T is greater than T naught. So delta Tb is equals to T minus T naught. The relationship with molecular mass of the solute, molecular mass of the solute, Delta Tb equals to 1000 into Kb W2 by M2 into W1. Where M2 is molecular mass of the solute. Now, if, if one mole of the solute dissolved in 1000 gram of the solvent, 1000 gram of the solvent. W2 by M2 is 1, W1 is 1000. The above expression becomes delta Tb equals to Kb. Kb is nothing but molar elevation constant or ebilloscopic constant. Molar elevation constant or ebilloscopic constant. Now, when one mole of the solute dissolved in 1000 gram of the solvent, that is also called as molality. Therefore, delta Tb is equals to M into Kb, delta Tb, that is equals to M into Kb, M into Kb. Now, so, these are relations between elevation in boiling point and molality of the solution. Now, Kb value, Kb value for water, Kb value for water. 
delta tf delta tf freezing point of solution is always less than the freezing point of pure solvent freezing point of pure solvent therefore therefore delta tf delta tf is equals to t not minus t is the difference between freezing point of the pure solvent and freezing point of the solution now here t not is greater than t Therefore, when salt is added, freezing point of solution decreases. In the case of boiling point, when salt is added, freezing point of solution increases. That is related to vapor pressure. That is related to vapor pressure. Vapor pressure of pure solvent is always greater than the vapor pressure of the solution. Now relations between delta Tf and molecular mass of the solute, delta Tf is equals to 1000 into Kf W2 by M2 into W1. When 1 mole of the solute dissolved in 1000 gram of the solvent, 1000 gram of the solvent, above expression becomes delta Tf is equals to Kf. Kf is called as cryoscopic constant or molal depression constant. Molal depression constant. Now, when one mole of solute dissolved in 1000 gram, that is also called as molality. Molality. So, delta Tf is equals to m into Kf. M into Kf. Okay. So, this is about depression in freezing point. Here, all the mathematical Terms are important. Okay. Using this, using this, they last some problems based on the molecular mass. Problems based on molecular mass. Now, so this is about the colligative properties. Now, the next part is about abnormal colligative properties. Now, see, colligative properties, it depends on the number of solute particle. And the property of dilute solution. And these are for non-electrolytes like glucose, urea, etc. Non-electrolytes. Suppose when electrolyte is used, they dissociate to give ions, number of particles. And these properties changes, molecular weight of the changes. So, colligative properties is inversely proportional to molecular weight. Colligative property is inversely proportional to molecular weight. For example, if NaCl is taken when dissolved in water, if it undergo 100% of ionization, NaCl dissociate to give Na plus and Cl minus, there are two particles. Number of particles are two. Two, therefore, other property change. So, in order to explain the abnormal property, one top proposed one more term called one tops factor. One tops factor. So, one tops factor is represented as I. It's about one top factor. One top factor. There are two types of electrolytes. Some undergo dissociation. And some of the compound undergo association. Association. Now, it's about one top factor. One top factor. Represent as I. One top factor represent as I. So one top factor I is equals to. Observed colligative property divided by theoretical colligative property. Observed 
colligative properties divided by theoretical colligative property theoretical colligative property second one i is equals to i is also is equals to one factor i is equals to normal molecular weight normal molecular mass of the compound divided by observed molecular mass observed molecular mass from this also we can calculate i one more number of particles formed formed after after dissociation dissociation or association divided by number of particles present before dissociation or association dissociation or association okay so this is about the calculation of one top factor calculation of one top factor we'll take simple, some simple example when sodium chloride nacl dissociate 100% Na plus Cl minus I val is equal to or if you take barium chloride BaCl2 that gives barium ion and 2 Cl minus ion here I val is equal to 3 if it undergo 100% ionization 100% ionization now, if there is no 100% ionization then you have to calculate degree of dissociation alpha By knowing the alpha value, by calculating the alpha value, then we can go for I value, one top factor. Now, when the compound undergo dissociation, compound undergo dissociation. When dissociation takes place, dissociation takes place. Now, now in this case, I equals to one top factor I equal to one plus n minus one into alpha divided by one or alpha is equals to alpha is equals to I minus one divided by n minus one. N is number of particles when it undergo 100 percent ionization number of particles n value. If degree of dissociation is given, alpha value is given, then you can calculate the I value, one top factor. This is for dissociation. Now, in the case of dissociation, for AB type salt, AB type salt, like NaCl, strong electrolyte, KCl, etc. N value is 2, correct? No, N value is 2. Therefore, alpha is equals to I minus 1 by 1 or it is equal to i minus 1. Now, salts like, salts like AB2, 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 like barium chloride, BaCl2, it dissociate to give 3 particles, it dissociate to give 3 particles, I okay, will write here, salt of the type AB2, AB2, like barium chloride, BaCl2, in BaCl2, n value is how much? 3, n value is 3, therefore here, alpha is equals to I minus 1, I minus 1 divided by 2. So, this is applicable for when electrolyte undergo dissociation. Now, when compound undergo association, association like formic acid, carboxylic acid, when carboxylic acid undergo dimerization, when it undergo dimerization, where two molecules of carboxylic acid linked to one another by 
intermolecular hydrogen bonding that process is called as association now if association takes place association takes place then in that case degree of dissociation of a weak electrolyte degree of dissociation of a weak electrolyte okay alpha degree of sorry degree of dissociation alpha when compound undergo when a compound undergo association so here alpha is equals to alpha is equals to 1 plus okay 1 by n 1 by n minus 1 into alpha into alpha okay, first we'll go for one half at i is equals to divided by 1 i is equals to 1 plus 1 by n minus 1 into alpha now we'll go for alpha value alpha value for association alpha see so alpha is equals to alpha is equals to i minus 1 divided by 1 by n minus 1 1 by n minus 1 if degree suppose uh, sodium chloride dissociate 80 percent 80 by 100 that is 0.8 alpha value is 0.8 or formic acid undergo 75 percent association 75 divided by 100 that is 7.5 alpha value 7.5 okay from this we can calculate the one top factor i once you know the one top factor then we can go for colligative property now, now based on this one top factor all the formulas are given along with the one top that's called as modified equation modified equation by taking one top factor now first one about the relative lowering of vapor pressure relative lowering of vapor pressure when you consider non electrolyte when you consider non electrolyte non electrolyte non electrolyte so relative lowering of vapor pressure p naught minus p by p naught that is equals to x2 this is for non electrolyte when you consider electrolyte you have to take the account of one top factor therefore p naught minus p by p naught is equals to I into X2. Similarly, osmotic pressure, osmotic pressure, pi is equals to CRT. This is for non-electrolyte. When you consider electrolyte ICRT, what is I? I is one top factor. Similarly, in the case of elevation in boiling point, delta TB equals to M into KB, non-electrolyte for electrolyte i into m into kb similarly delta tf delta tf it is equals to m into kf this is for non electrolyte when you consider electrolyte you have to consider the term one top factor so so whenever electrolyte is given then first thing you have to calculate the one top factor based on that one top factor value then you can go for delta tb yeah. For example, sodium chloride, sodium chloride, I value is 2. So, here almost that property doubles when compared with the non-electrolyte. So, in order to explain the abnormal colligative property, one top propose the term called one top factor, one top factor. So, this is about the very important chapter solution.